Masters of the Air tells the true story of the 100th bomb group flying their B-17 flying fortresses during World War II. It is a follow-up to one of my favourite TV shows, Band of Brothers. Nine episodes will be available on Apple TV starting January 26, 2024 with parts 1 and 2, continuing weekly until the conclusion with part 9 on March 15. Episode 2 commences with the aftermath of Episode 1's aborted first combat mission. We have two cases of frostbite and the CO has a stomach ulcer that has ruled him out. Bucky's losing his mind. He asks Kurt, the Irish pilot, to punch him so he can feel something. Bro, you're a liability. Bucky meets with the new CO and there's a lighter on his desk that Bucky stares at. I could not work out why this shot was included. Was it actually focused on the papers it was sitting on? I watched these shows twice. Once as just a viewer and once again with a critical eye when I take notes. The first viewing had me perplexed as to why they are concentrating on the damned lighter. Now I see the papers. I never would have thought of that as a casual viewer. Are they transfer orders? Discharge papers? It looks like Bucky's file that Colonel Huglin vomited blood on in episode 1. So Bucky gets demoted and some other guy gets made air exec. I don't understand what's so bad about being air exec. Is it that it's a desk job? Didn't we just end an episode with everyone getting a wake up call that flying combat missions isn't a cakewalk? Apparently Buck went to see the Colonel before Bucky and told him that he should be back flying. Bucky mentions he can read upside down, but what exactly did he read? It feels like a scene was cut here. What does that line even mean? If this whole thing ended and there were only two pilots left up in the air, it'd be me and you. Is he saying they're the best or that they love flying so much they'd not want to come down? I was struggling to understand the point of the plane crashing in the distance. On re-watching, I see now that it is to show how many planes they are losing. So their crew numbers are now down low enough that they need to start mixing and matching crews from other squadrons. Bucky shows himself to be a scumbag again, questioning the British on their spelling of maths. You know, the people who invented English? He's also getting jealous of the barmaid. He's getting to be really unlikable, telling a woman that someone has just had the clap. Or maybe you just need to be a yank to see his good side. So the British tell the Yanks that they should do their bombing at night. If they did, they would survive more missions. While the Yanks take that as an affront, I'm not sure if this scene is meant to make the Yanks look good, but in my eyes, it just makes both sides look like drop kicks. But these boys have a special bond, and they sort out these unruly Brits. Some of these night scenes are very difficult to make out fine details, such as riding on bombs. Is it time to invest in an OLED TV? Seems more and more movies and TV shows are having this problem. We are treated to a lovely monologue about how the ground crews have committed themselves just as much as the air crews to winning the war, and how without their support, all the bombings could never have taken place. Again, during the mission briefing, they're hooting and hollering for reasons unknown to me. Is it because Norway is less fortified than Germany, so they'll encounter less resistance? I don't get the point of the focus on the cleaning of the hard stand with fire. At one point in this episode's mission, Crosby seems to have no idea where they are, and he looks out a window and sees smoke. He says it's the Germans using smoke to hide the target. I thought he was actually spotting this oil fire and was going to bomb their own airfield. Crosby is once again airsick, poor fella. He even puts a helmet on that had his own frozen vomit within it. When it defrosts, it drops out and he thinks he's leaking his brain matter all over the plans. This mission goes much better without the cloud cover blocking their view but they still lose some planes. Luckily, it's nobody we care about. Kurt's plane gets damaged, which causes a touching display of camaraderie as the planes need to stick together for safety. They decide to slow down and limp to landfall with a lower altitude. Kurt manages to get his plane barely back to land, and for the amount of damage done to that cliff top, I would expect to see commensurate damage to the plane. But the undercarriage looks pristine. Oh, and Crosby's bungled navigation attempt was the best thing since sliced bread. They even want to promote him. He, of course, tries to deflect the attention to his best mate, Bubbles. No, not the chimp. So far, it seems like Crosby is our guy to cheer for. Buck seems like the boring, stoic commander, and Bucky seems like the guy to dislike. Kurt seems like a bit of a rough-and-tumble, roll-with-the-punches kind of guy. Apart from those four, I identify with very few members of these crews. These lads work hard, and they play even harder. At least with Bucky preoccupied with trying to sing, everyone else can enjoy the night and maybe pick up a bird or two. They even get to enjoy an indoor bicycle race, living the life. As they head to their air raid shelter, Buck reveals that he doesn't like gambling or drinking because his dad was a drunk who would gamble. That explains the ginger beer. This episode was a bit of a backward step for me. 
I'm dropping down to a 7 out of 10. I just find these guys so unlikable. Maybe it's the Yankee cockiness that I thought they got smacked out of them in episode 1. Maybe it's the lack of one-on-one -on -one time with the characters to get to know them. The technical aspects of Masters of the Air are all great. Maybe with the exception of the lighting slash exposure levels in a few scenes. But where the show is losing me is the pacing. Maybe they need to spend less time on the actual missions and more time on the prep and recovery. The flying was interesting the first couple of times, but it's starting to become a little repetitive. The pre-flight checklist, the taxiing on the runway, getting up to speed, climbing, flying, experiencing flak, then the fighters. It can't have a mission every episode or it will get boring. I hope they maintain the hour long episodes. The last thing we need is the episodes getting shorter, especially if we're going to get to know these characters better. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie. Thanks for your time and have a good one.